Well, the American DJ Casey Kasems died at the age of 82 in a hospital in Washington State. He had Parkinson's disease and a form of dementia. After working for Armed Forces Radio while serving in Korea, Casey Kasem began presenting the American Top 40 in 1970. And he did that until he finally gave it all away in 2004. And to a different audience, he was also known as the voice of Shaggy in the cartoon series Scooby-Doo. Well, Dave D. Whitcomb, who works for the Australian Radio Network and has been doing the uh, work of Jukebox Saturday Night at 4KQ in Brisbane for the past 25 years, was there when Casey Kasem's American Top 40 made its way onto Australian radio airwaves. Well, initially, uh, Casey Kasem was running on about one station in Australia. It was, it was running on 2UW in Sydney, and we were in Adelaide. And the big question at the time was, would an American accent alienate people listening to the radio in Australia? Because we were very Australian conscious at the time, and we sat down and we had a meeting. There was no research in those days. We just sat down and had a listen to a demonstration disc of Casey Kasem's American Top 40. Yeah, we were in Adelaide at the time, and we sat down and had a meeting with about six of us in the office and we played Casey Kasem's demonstration disc and thought how would this go in Adelaide and how would this be accepted by an Australian audience and the thing that was so interesting about Casey Kasem's presentation and those people who devised the whole show was something that became very commonplace in radio and television in future years and what what that was was the, the hook and the tease. You probably noticed that um, so much of our television these days and so much radio is sort of based on the hook and tease where uh, the personality will suggest something about something that's coming up, you know, and it'll be a sort of a mystique line, you know, coming up the luckiest guy in the business and also the unluckiest. I'll tell you why in a few minutes. You know, that was sort of the Casey case of delivery and you'd sort of be hanging in there to see what may be transpiring in this top 40 countdown and of course that was the whole thing and then of course he had the long distance dedication and all these other little interest factors that we'd never heard before so we decided that there was so much American television in Australia at the time the American accent wasn't going to be a problem and we'd run it at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning and so from those humble beginnings and the four disc set used to fly into Australia every week religiously it would come in thanks to Qantas who would bring it in and there were many Saturdays when we'd be down at the airport on a Saturday afternoon waiting to see if American Top 40 would arrive in time for the Sunday and um, then we would present it and it went right across Australia it was on uh, 5KA in Adelaide it was 2 in Sydney and then WS ran it for a while it went to Brisbane it was in Perth and then it was all the country stations and usually it was run either on a Saturday afternoon at 5 o'clock or a Sunday morning at 9 and it just sort of became a traditional part of Australian radio with Casey Kasem. Now he didn't invent Top 40 as a format but he did seem to take it to a new level. That was the presentation, the uh, the work and the research that went into that show in Hollywood because they were, they were masters at the entertainment business. They knew who was going to be good to deliver this special show, even though Casey Kasem had little to do with uh, American Top 40 radio and such. He wasn't a big personality or anything. Um, he was just developed by uh, Tom Rounds, who died the other day at the age of 77, and a number of other people uh, who selected Casey from a lineup of people they tried out in Hollywood and they thought that was the delivery that was going to be just different enough for American Top 40 to take it to a new level. So that was how he started and it was, it was a springboard for him. Now, Australian radio at the time, as I recall, in the 70s had that dispute where they were playing mostly Australian music. So American Top 40 actually reintroduced American music into Australia. Would that be right? It did. It, it popularised a lot of stuff because there was a lot of things on American Top 40 that didn't actually get released in Australia, but then after American Top 40 played them, quite often the record companies would sort of pick up on things and, and uh, they would be released over here. So it was influential in a small way because there was always things that would make the charts in America uh, that hadn't made it here, and, and that was a, it was a handy exposure for them. American Top 40 
was fairly mainstream actually it wasn't um it didn't step out of the uh, of the genre of being pure pop music and it was it was sort of designed that way to be what we call mass appeal these days and, and that's the way they did it and it, it also inspired other offshoots like the american country countdown uh soundtrack of the 60s and all these other things that came later all in the mantle of american top 40 and then there were specials that came along you know that featured other artists who'd, who'd been on the uh, on the at40 show and around everywhere else and they produced a whole lot of stuff so watermark where Casey worked, that was the name of the company, that produced a, a tremendous number of, of specials and, and radio features that we used all over the world. Now, Dave, did it matter that he was American and this was Australia and this is the American Top 40? Nobody blinked an eyelid, strangely enough. American Top 40 ran and everybody was very happy with it. Um, and it was accepted. It was sweet from the start. I don't know why, um, it just was. And, and even though at that, that time in the early 70s, Australia was sort of trying to establish itself as a, a, an identity. There was a bit of a national spirit going on, you know, where we, we would sort of um, trumpet a lot of Australian music that was coming out at the time. And then the great joy was to hear Little River Band or one of the Australian acts like Air Supply. That was another one. They were so well accepted in America. Uh, and Casey would be there telling the story and sometimes the, the researchers would ring us up and, and get stories about um, Glenn Shorrock and the Little River Band because they were top ten in America. And uh, it, you know, it was just so acceptable. So Australian music actually got into America and, and there was a nice cross-pollination of that. Um, it was it was exciting. I'm Casey Kasem. Now, one more time, the words I've ended my show with since 1970. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Yes, that was Casey Kasem, uh, the American Top 40, as remembered by Dave D. Whitcomb, who's presented Jukebox Saturday Night at 4KQ Brisbane for the last quarter of a century. This is ABC News Radio.